Hi, good afternoon, good evening, and good morning. And wherever you are in the world, listen to this wonderful podcast, which is the Mindful Leadership. This is my episode 23, where I interview inspiring people that think slightly differently, something slightly differently from the normal that can give back and always have good golden nuggets of information that we can all share and grow and learn. Uh, today, my spe very special guest is Michael Daly. And uh, look, we only just decided to do this a few moments ago. So I think this is going to be absolutely awesome because it's all about giving back. It's all about understanding how people work and how people operate, but also share and grow. My name is Jason Cooper. I'm a sales training coach. I help inspire people to do better in their lives, better in their businesses, and obviously affect the bottom line. But again, it's all about return on relationship. So the more relationships that you can build with your business partners, your people that you sell to for the long term, because you will know at the end of it, that relationship is set in gold. And especially in these wonderful times that we're in, in COVID times where we have to think slightly differently, we have to engage with our audience. So Michael, Thank you. You're very welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. It really is, Jason. And, and I know you've had some phenomenal, well, not some, all of your speakers are phenomenal that you've had on so far. So I'm absolutely honoured to be to be talking to you today. And I'm really looking forward to our chat. Uh, Michael, we've known each other for a while now. We're both into the same sort of uh, uh, coaching groups and stuff like that. But really, today is really about yourself. Um, would you like to give a, a quick synopsis? Because I've only just looked at your website, uh, but it's Rather than me uh, highlighting you, why don't you highlight you and tell me what you do? Okay, I suppose like my own background originally, Jason, was training. I originally spent nearly a decade training to be a monk. So having trained for a monk, it was time to move on in my life and bring myself to my best uh, um, best place in, in this world and where I could make my next best contribution. So that had me working with people from marginalised and disadvantaged backgrounds. Uh, started making a career out of that, trained in that, um, got qualified, qualified in that, and I did that for a number of years, ended up managing the youth service, and got to a stage then in the late 90s where, is this really, really what I want to do with the rest of my life? And I was pretty much in a position of, of administration. Yeah, safe, secure, permanent, pensionable, had one of them brilliant pensions that we all hear about now, the, the gold-crusted ones, the defined benefit pensions. Yeah. The only thing was, I was working with people, Jason, who you were asking to take a risk in life and not let their circumstances or, or, or um, backgrounds hold them back from going forward in life, whether that was to emigrate or whether that was to go to college or whether that was to chase a dream job. And here I was saying, well, if I stay in this job, I'm pretty much only staying in it because it is safe, secure and principled. So I, I've always been trained, never make a life decision, a major life decision in January. Always make sure you do it in the summer, the spring, or even in the winter, but not just not in, in January with the year ahead. So in December of uh, 98, I made that decision. I'm moving on. Came back in in January, handed in me notice. Uh, I got on really well with me, boss. I got on really well with the director. They wouldn't accept it. So I'm not taking it, Michael. So, <laughs> so we had to, and I was nervous enough about handing it in. This was pre yeah, Celtic cool. Tiger. There was no jobs out there. Like, you, you know, emigration was still a big thing. So anyway, I handed in my notice and I went and, and then I worked for myself um, and loved it. And it was pretty much really three things that I started to do at that stage. One was the whole thing around training, big into training, which is now developed into teaching more so than training. Mm -hmm. And then the other one was I um, was coaching, got into a lot of coaching, but I was much more interested in mentoring. And for me, the, the difference was mentoring was long term and building the relationship. And I loved what you were saying there about building a long-term relationship. So I got into, involved in mentoring, and that was part and parcel of the job that I'd been originally in. I hadn't got time to mentor the staff for the simple reason. I was in administration, sitting on committees. And then the third thing, and that came very much from a trip to Germany and then in, on, on to, to, to Poland, down to Spain. I was teaching courses in a number of universities down there. And my first book came from that, The Six Traits of Self-Leadership. So I, I, I wrote that book in 2000 and uh, started actually writing it in 2010 and it wasn't ready till 2014, four years. It was a labour of love. I'm, I'm working away. But also what happened in that time was the Celtic Tiger crashed. 
So oh, yeah. He, uh, yeah, so and it was when you were working freelance, it was a tough, tough, tough. Uh, um, it was a tough gig to be out there. And what happened in, at the end of 2011, uh, my old boss, who I'd still done freelance work for, invited me back to take back the exact job I had left in 98. You know, so it's like talking about synchronicity. So I went back and I did that job. How, that? Went, how, how, how did you find that when you were saying that from being I, independent now going back into a full time gig again? It was, I tell you, at that time it suited Jason purely because it gave great structure to the writing. And, yeah. and it gave an income. Like you, you weren't out hustling for an income. You weren't out. Yeah. So, like you, like you, you know yourself, Jason. What you said. There's times you're extremely busy and it's full yeah. on, and then there's other times it's extremely quiet. So, and and that's not the ideal. Well, the second wasn't the ideal way for me to write. It was like I'd always been taught to write every day. Just make sure you write every day, three, six, five. Just for, so when I was working for myself, it was a challenge because. There was times you had some work on and it had to be done. Mm -hmm. There's other times. So it was either lots of writing or no writing. And that wasn't working. So it gave me structure, Jason. It gave me structure yeah. and it gave me a salary. So I wasn't worried about paying the bills. So yeah. um, and then it gave me, I suppose, like in terms of that bit of sense of being back. I, I'd gone back to my old job and I had no doubts about that I'd done the right thing to leave originally. But I'd, I'd done the right thing in terms of going back here as well. And I, and I really liked the people I worked for. I genuinely enjoyed the people I worked for. I did that, Jason. And then what happened was that book finished. In, I published that book in 2014. And I finished the book by asking, is there anything that you really want to do in life that you're not doing and why? Or is there anything in life you really want to do? So I I'd finished that book in November. And I said, well, there was one thing I always wanted to do. And I'd read about this group of people who had met in London. Mm -hmm. And they got together and they spent six months driving from London to Sydney. And I said, God, I'd love to do that. That sounds absolutely just. So I said, I've, I've always wanted to do that. I said, well, what's stopping you now? So the following June, I was still in the full-time job. So the following July, I got to take six months out. And uh, I flew to London. And 14 of us got on the back of a truck and we spent the next six months driving to Sydney. And what, yeah, but what happened to Jason, when I finished my first book, someone had said to me um, in the publishing world, Michael, you know, you talk a lot about in your first book about success. What is success? So why don't you write a book about success? And I said, yeah, well, I, I did want to challenge the norm. And people are a bit surprised. And I challenged the listeners to go, go and look now at what, the dictionary defines the success and it defines success and it has changed, but only slightly over the last number of years because we've been challenging the dictionary to yeah. change it. We've been full on up oh, in so, 2014. Sorry, Jason. Yeah. Well, yeah, So what do you mean by success and what does it actually mean to you? Cause the, the dictionary definition means this, but what does that actually mean? Cause success means different things to different people in, in, from what I understand from it. Oh yeah, Jay, totally. And and I was I was working off like in terms of as I thought most people were working off that that definition of success from the dictionary, which was fame, wealth, the achievement yeah. of fame, wealth, or power, or yeah. and they changed the Jason slightly different, or the the uh, uh, the achievement of that which you set out to do. And I go, so if you don't achieve it, you're not successful. If you don't yeah. have fame, wealth, or power, so I wanted to cha challenge that now. So I said, well, write, write that book, Michael. So I said, well, here's the opportunity to write that book and do that trip. So I started writing writing the book um, on the trip. Now, Jason, the ego got in the way a little bit. The, actually, wow. the ego got in the way. That's, a, a big that's success, really, isn't it? Uh, the ego does big. get in the way and uh, yeah. fame and the fortune and all of that, all the other sort of acronyms that you can think of gets in the way. So what did you do to step over that and well, push that? Well, yeah. I, Jason, it was very simple. What the, what the publisher had asked me to do was not the book I'd heard that he wanted me to write. Like, basically, they wanted me to look at success down through the ages from, from, from a political perspective, from a religious perspective, from a social perspective. Now, you could do that sitting in a library in Dublin yeah. or London or anywhere. So I said, yeah, yeah. no, this isn't. I want to actually get much more person. So what I did was I said to the group, uh, and particular two people in in particular, I said, um, "I need to get off this. I need to get off this truck. The writing's not happening for me. It's just not happening." Yeah. And one of them, who had made their career in the hotel industry, 
and who had now, when they were finishing on the trip, were going to work for J.K. Rowling's charity in London. They um, they said to me, look, Michael, I'm out of favour from a hotel in Singapore, but it's not just any hotel. Mm-hmm. Why don't why don't I give you that favour and you go and write your book there? So I got in touch with the hotel, and it just so happened, Jason, the only time they could fit me into the hotel was when we were getting there on the truck. So I stayed on the truck, stayed right, and got to the hotel in Singapore, and I met my muse there uh, in Paradine, and I spent a weekend with this tribe of people, this group of people um, who talked and we chatted and we discussed what success was and we shared it and we taught it and we came back and then at the end of that the second book the second book wrote itself actually, it just came from that that, 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 that Tell me about that, so what are the the key learnings about success and what did you describe, I haven't read the book so uh, I'm going freestyle here but what's the book about and what did you learn and what can you give back by the stories that you told within the book? So the, the, the book was Conversations in Singapore. It was done over a number of conversations. And, and it started with, with, with health. And they, they, they were asking, you know, well, is, you know, we often hear, Jason, health is your wealth. And I, we challenged that whole notion. Actually, if health is your wealth, why do we have so much addiction? Why do we have so much uh, mental health issues? Yep. Why do we have, and this is not to minimize any of them, absolutely not. We're, we're taught wealth is our health, but yet so few of us actually take it at that until we get sick. So we yep. were saying like that maybe culture, society doesn't actually treat wealth as your health. It treats yep. financial gain, it treats monetary gain, it treats material as your wealth. So, and as we know about that, uh, uh, even based on Steve Jobs, when he died, like he's the wealthiest man in, in li- alive, but you know he didn't have his health. And then he sort of looked back at his life, back from, and all of the therapeutic stuff that he did didn't work. So sometimes that's not success, is it? And he even said to himself, "That's not my success. My success is different now." And Jason, that was the whole thing of tracking that. Like, what is like, and spot success in our twenties is different in our thirties and our different yeah. forms. And it's just taking time to take stock and ask: Is your health really your wealth? And if it is, what are you doing about it? And then, um, I, I was going back, Jason, to like the, the, the conversations were happening. And I was going back to the trip and thinking about things that were, were, were happening. And like, we were going into Iran. And it's illegal. Uh, alcohol is illegal in Iran. Um, uh, uh, drugs are illegal in, in Iran. And yet they have a huge amount of alcoholism, a huge amount of... So even, so like banning stuff... And, and I'm not advocating that we legalise them either now. I'm just saying that here's a country who is trying to push health as your wealth, and it's not working. So unless we take ownership of it ourselves and make health our wealth... So that would have been the first conversation, Jason. And then we would have moved on to relationships. And then, you know, if relationships are your wealth, your health. And, and like, again, going back to the trip. And I can remember very specifically, you know, a story. So we were talking about uh, relationships. And then I, I, I would go back to the trip and go, well, actually, that, that correlates with what happened on the Tajikistan-Afghanistan border. We were camping on the Tajikistan-Afghanistan border. And what happened there was, I remember one of them telling the story, Jason, of, of the, um, the, the, the man and his son bringing the donkey to the market. And uh, um, the man was leading the donkey and the son was on the donkey. And a, and, a, and a person came by and said, that's disgraceful, absolutely disgraceful to see an old man bringing his son and the son, the son should get down and let the old man get up. Yeah, of course. So yeah, he so, so he did, Jake. So the old man got on top of the donkey and the young kid and someone else came along. So that's disgraceful to see that the two of you, you know, your, your, your father on the donkey and you're leading them. The two of you should be on the donkey. So the two of them then got on the donkey. And 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 and, and as you know here in Ireland, Jason, we call the donkey the ass. We call a donkey yeah. an ass. So the two of them are on, on the ass. And next thing, Jason, they're going along and someone comes on. So that's a disgrace. That poor old ass carrying the two of you. The two of you should get down and carry the ass. So the two of them did. And as they came around the corner, Jason, they, they, they stumbled and the ass fell off over the bridge and drowned. And the moral of the story was if you try and please people all the time, you may as well kiss your ass goodbye. 
Yeah. And that yeah. was the whole thing about life. Like, what kind of relationship do you Are you there to please people? Or are you there just to please you? So, That's a good metaphor. I like that. Well, Jason, the whole thing is like, what, like what, what kind of relationships do you want? And, and again, reflecting on that. And then we, 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 we looked at wealth and monetary wealth. And we all have bills to pay. We live in the real world. And then we have a comfort zone around wealth, Jason. And like, if it goes above it, so there's an acceptable amount of money in our lives. And this is where you see people who win the lottery, who a number of years later have lost it all again. It's like they didn't deserve it. Uh, that's they, they, the problem. They, 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 if you're given something straight away, you don't take care of it. You don't nurture it. Uh, I think it's like putting a plant. You put a seed down and then you water it every day. And then you see it actually growing. But what's it's actually doing underneath, it's planting the roots the foundations of it and then it starts to grow and then you start to look after it and before you know it it shoots up into a massive tree but that takes time and that takes energy exactly what you've just said and jason it's that was the whole thing yeah and, and then jason it's funny that you you, you you mentioned that too because then we talked about your legacy what legacy are you going to live mm -hmm. for having lived like what are you going to leave behind and there's, there's, a, there's a there's an old saying you know those who want to leave a legacy leave, leave, leave plant trees in whose shade they will never yeah. get to enjoy so um we talked about legacy so we talked about the different areas of our lives and what it is and what you said at the start how many people actually get to define what success is for them and that's what the third book that i'm now working on at the moment it's just trilogy is it it's just like a it, ongoing story well, J J and, it, and it feels that way because what I did with this was then was people, I wanted to interview people who have actually said, you know what, I do know what success is for me. I've come to that realisation. I've put the work in um, or I've had that light bulb, bulb, bulb moment. And what I want to do now is I want to pursue that. I want to pursue that life or that work. And then at what cost does that come? And the, the, so the next book is going to be 12 stories of people. We're pretty much there. We just one more story to, to, to write. And it, they'll tell their stories of walking away, challenging and all as that was at times. Because some of them have built really successful careers and their, their choices were now going to impact on their families and on their communities um, and on their colleagues. So it, it, it didn't, the, the, the whole thing of following their journey then did they tell people what they were going to do often they didn't tell people because they didn't want to be influenced by outside how are they going to manage financially how are they going to deal with the loneliness and they like a lot of them had a lot of stuff in common but the biggest problem one was loneliness they all felt that sense of isolation and loneliness for having stepped outside of the herd and I having think gone what happens is uh, your your stress levels are that high because you're invested into the company or the business that you're actually in and you're really successful. But once you let it go, you're almost like the stress levels go down and go, but it's good that the stress levels are going down, but I don't have anything around me to uh, make myself get back onto the horse again or back onto the ass again or whatever you might want to have a look at. So that's where the challenges actually happen with the head. It's like people going into... Uh, pension like they've worked all their career and all of a sudden they don't have that rewarding career that they did have and now things have changed but to flip it back on his head i interviewed a guy um quite recently that uh, now he made money out of ipos and this thing and the other he does what what you do uh, and he mentors people and mentors startups mentors and other businesses and does keynote speaking and writes books and this thing and the other and i think that's the right thing to do well, it depends on what they want to do and how they want to perceive that. So how do you yeah, see like, that? So like, 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 like you take that gentleman there, Jason, like he's done, he's made it, he has his finance there and he wants to give something back. And like, I, I like the show, I, I, I'm involved and I do a bit of volunteering with my own community radio here in Dublin 15 and my own show is called Making a Difference, where I interview people who are making a difference and, and, this, and are making our, our communities and our cities and our country a better place to be. So it's that kind of thing of wanting to make a difference. I think most of us, not all, but most of us want to make a difference and have yeah, of course. this world a better place for having had us in it. And as you take that gentleman there who you interviewed, Jason, here he is wanting to take the knowledge and skills and the talents and give back. And the other thing is people, you know, they may be in one career, 
and they walk away because they want to pursue something totally different. But they don't necessarily cut off all the learning that they've had. They actually bring that with them to the next one. Yeah. So it's not like you're starting totally fresh. You're bringing all that knowledge, experience, know-how with you into the next stage of your life. And what I tried to do in the book, Jason, was talk to people in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and have a cross-section of them and just what it was that had them walk away from doing what, what, what they had been doing and the challenges involved in that. And so answer me this. So what were they? What were the things that, uh, regard? I think sometimes regardless of the age, uh, you make it and then you go, oh, I'm doing something else, I'm going to do something. But what were the things, the key characteristics between them all? I suppose like in terms of you, you, you had where people had got caught up in life they had got careers, they'd got families, they'd got mortgages, and they'd gone on that treadmill and mm. found it difficult and hard to get off it. And then got to a stage where they were saying, they can no longer do this. I can just no longer stay on this treadmill. It has served me well. I have a home maybe out of it. I have a, I have a family now. It's now or never. I now need to move on and go and pursue what I really, if I want to be true to myself and be true to my family. So the, a, a number of common ones, they could no longer go on living the life that they had. They just couldn't do it anymore. And they were saying, if I carry on doing this, not only am I a fraud, it will affect my health. Yep. It will, will affect in, in our mentally, physically, emotionally. So I need to now move on and go for this. And if I don't do it now, well, then maybe when, I don't know. Like they, like they, they couldn't uh, justify not doing it. Like they had other justifications in the past. They were in college or they were building a career or they had bills to pay, but they were going, none of that matters anymore. None mm -hmm. of that. I have to go and pursue this if I'm to be true to myself and be true to the world around me. So tell me this now, Michael, what, where's, where are you going now? And what what's happening in your life right now? And where do you think you're going to be making a difference in other people's lives? Well, I think, Jason, in, in terms of trying to get this book done, trying to get it finished, big challenge for writers at the moment because um, getting it out there in the pandemic, people are, a lot of people are reading, brilliant. A lot of people are buying books, which is brilliant. Um, the whole thing of book launches and doing stuff on Zoom and, and, and looking at that totally differently. So... So, uh, so in terms of the writing, it's how do you in incorporate and embrace that? Uh, at the end, at the end of this week, I, I am sorry, from the, not the, at the end of this week, yeah, the next three days, teaching a course in Germany on on, on leadership on the first book. Now, by mm -hmm. right, I should have been out there in May doing that in person. Would I rather be out there now in person? Of course, I would. But the reality oh. is, we can't. So this is a new challenge, and it's a great one because what what this will do is, and, and and straight away I can think of. There's a, there's a conference over in, in, in uh, Westminster University in March, and they've invited me to do a session on Zoom where they wouldn't possibly have done that if it meant traveling over in person. So it's opened up, and like they're not going to have a conference in person and then one person coming in on Zoom. The conference is going to be in Zoom, regardless of what happens with vaccines, and hopefully they'll come through sooner rather than later. So it's opened up a whole new world, and there's a whole new challenge there, Jason, around... Mm -hmm. using zoom and not just zoom we shouldn't be just promoting zoom using all online materials and doing yeah, that. i think i think uh it it does change the aspect but the good and wonderful thing about it it you've got a bigger audience which is absolutely awesome that really helps in that way so rather than just a, a localized audience like german germany now you can go like outside of Germany, you can go to the rest of Europe or uh, the US or, or whatever else. So what do you think, what challenges are people facing right now in, in this time, but how can people actually pivot and overcome based on your experience? I think, Jason, in, in terms of pivoting and going after what it is you want, I think you have to figure out what you're strong at. I think you really have to figure out and people have to and, and very clear being strong at something is totally different than being good at something you can be good at something but you might necessarily enjoy doing it being mm -hmm. strong at something that comes to you it comes to no jason you're you're in sales and i i, I remember specifically in the first book i was mentoring a, a, a sales guy brilliant guy and what happened with him was he was blowing everyone out of the water in sales he, great networker 
great at that building that long term relationship. And he was he, he you know, Jason, what happened was he, he he was put into a position of management and he floundered. It just wasn't for him because yeah. he was good at it. He was good with people. He was good at paperwork. He could do it all. But it wasn't his strength. His strength was back on the floor, selling cars, meeting customers, meeting different, totally different relationship. So could he do management? Absolutely, he could do management. He, and he was good at management, but he wasn't strong at it. So he was never going to really enjoy it. So he went back to the floor, done really, really well, and is continuing to do well. So I would think in terms of pivoting and moving now, look at and figure out what it is you're strong at. Now, that's challenging now because, Jason, I think most people are just trying to keep it together with regard to what's going on now. Just, it's dragging on now. Whatever novelty of break, yeah, isn't it? It's just dragging on, Jason. People just are fed up of it now. We want to try and get back to some sense of of, of, of routine. I know people say the new norm. Okay, people are looking for some sense of routine or some sense of can I plan my holidays next year? Can, can I, you can't even plan Christmas. Can we get together at Christmas? So, and I think people want to have some sense of, okay, can I make some kind of plans? Can I, you know, is my job safe? Um, we, 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 you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking at, and I know we're fairly critically young people. Uh, I can't I just, in, in truth, I just can't be critical of them. Like they should be going to university now. They should be enjoying themselves. They, you know, school are the best days of your life. People in fifth and sixth year, particularly in fifth year, they should yep. be just having a ball now, Jason. They should be just enjoying. They should yeah. be just, and we're, but I, I do think now we are not going back to a, a, anything that we did in February and January this year. It's it's different. And it, uh, as we know, every day is different anyway. So we have to sort of, in some ways, in some respect, get back to some sort of, uh, as you say, some sort of normality, but with a difference. And it will be slightly different in the way that we meet and greet people in the future. And now let's hope there'll be some sort of action that's actually been properly tested and whatever else. So tell me this, and I'm going to change the question. If you had a superpower for five minutes and you were given a special pill to do that with, and you all of a sudden you go, bang, I've got this, what would you do and how would you help and feed forward with people? I suppose like that superpower would be to give me power to be able to make the decisions that I believe we need to make, uh, not just here in Ireland. I, I, I believe throughout the world, Jason, I think like that whole thing around, um, I'd love to get rid of fake news because oh, yeah. that, that whole thing of lying, like lying is now becoming the norm. Like it's like you, because you lie and you keep lying, it becomes the truth. So I'd love yeah. to just see people be more authentic and more real. And um, that means, so if I had that superpower, just call people out, just say it as it is, please tell the truth. And, and and let's just get on with it. Stop, stop. Because you keep saying it, that doesn't make it true. Because people don't challenge it, doesn't make it true. Because you keep saying it, doesn't mean you have to believe it. So I think like that thing, Jason. I look. I, I, I look around. We we seen what can be done with regard to homelessness in in Ireland. It was sorted out when we had to get it sorted out because it was affecting the rest of us. It was going to affect the the the, the rest of the population. So I, I don't. I think with political will, that could be done very very easily. There's too much vested interest. There's too much money. So I think that could be sorted out very 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 quickly. And um, we look at the health service. Pay a lot of lip service. We, you know, are we paying them what they should be getting paid? Are we giving them the resources that they need? Can we get the health service? So I, I'd be just going back. I, Jason, there's, there's three things. If that super pill could give me the power to be able to make the decisions. Now that's more personal with, 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 with the fake news and the lying and lying becoming more acceptable and all normal. Get rid of that. Get our health service sorted out. Get our housing. And they're just two basics, Jason. Just get them two basics sorted out. Everyone has somewhere to live. Oh, that's that's a and I, I, I really applaud you for that. And it does seem that you, you do want to make a difference. And I like what you've said. And that's really powerful and incredible. So how can people find out more about you? There's a little ticker, but for the audio audience, cannot read that. Uh, so uh, tell us a little bit more. The website, Jason, we go to the website, Michael Daly, Ireland, and it's Daly, D-A-L-Y. I know it's spelled a lot different a lot around the world. So it's Michael Daly, D-A-L-Y, uh, MichaelDalyIreland.com, and everything there is on the website, Jason. Access to the books, access to the work that I do, and um, the work that I'm currently doing at the moment. 
Awesome. That is absolutely brilliant. And thanks for coming on very last minute. And uh, you inspired me when we first started speaking on the other platform, whatever that platform. But you've been very welcome and I really thoroughly enjoyed. You've been on the Mindful Leadership with Jason Cooper. My new website is jasoncooper.io. You can find out a lot more from me on my YouTube channel. Uh, you can find a lot more on Spotify, uh, LinkedIn. You can find me all over there. Please connect with me. If you like what you hear today, please like and share. And if you happen to give it a five-star rating, that'd be really appreciated. And share with your friends. Uh, that would be absolutely awesome. So thank you again with my very special guest, Michael Daly. I'm your host, Jason Cooper. This is the Mindful Leadership Podcast. Thanks, Jason. It's been a pleasure.